The next parameter we have here in the QRMA device is liquefying time. Liquefying time. If you have seen a sperm, an ejaculated sperm fluid before, you will notice that when you leave it, if you, if you, if you spill it on the floor and observe after a couple of minutes, you will discover that it liquefies. So, um, there is a reason why it's designed that way. A normal healthy semen is designed to be thick, thick and gelatinous, thick and gelatinous. When I'm talking about gelatin, I mean gel. Um, you, if you know what we call gelatin, is like a capsule. Those capsules that we use to capsulate drugs or, or herbal remedy. All right. By the time you take it in, after a while, why it is used? is because after a while it is meant to dissolve so that the content inside can now have access to metabolize in the, within the system all right so the sperm is designed to have some nature to, to to be thick originally and then after a while it's expected to liquefy so this parameter is trying to measure the liquefying time the liquefying time before we continue, hear me out first. Hear me out. Our training is coming up very soon. In the month of May, 15th to 20th of May. You see, you have enough time to prepare for it. All right. Come for our training where you are going to have access to the full package of the training on the quantum resonance magnetic analyzer, on the non-linear system analyzer, and several other stuff, you can't afford to miss this training. Let's get back to class. Before I even talk about that, you discover that people have conditions where they talk about uh, maybe what three sperm counts, all right, in the sense that um, the, this thickness is not there. And there is a reason why this thickness is not there. Now, this what three sperm count may be the main reason why they are they find it difficult to achieve fertility. Now, why is that? Why is this thickness there? Let me paint this picture. See, when an ejaculation happens, like it's supposed to have a projectile motion, pew, it leaves the penis and goes into the cervix. It leaves the penis and expected to travel down the uterus with a speed. Pew. If you are, if you are trying to stone something and you want it to to stick to a wall. It's like taking a um, eba or fufu. Those of us that are Africans, you know it. You swallow food, all right, or starchy food. By the time you 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 roll it together and you throw it on a wall, it's expected to stick to the wall, all right. The idea is for this semen. As it ejaculates out of the penis, it's expected to go and stick to the cervix in the uterus. Now, as it sticks to the cervix, after a while, it's expected to liquefy. Then, by the time it liquefies, it now gives opportunity for the sperm to now swim out of the semen and find its way into the uterus by contraction. By contraction of the uterus then is able to wriggle its way and find its way into the fallopian tube where an ovulated egg is waiting to be fertilized. Now, this parameter is trying to measure the liquefying time. I'm going to show you an image that will give a better description of how this happens. All right. Now, the liquefying time measures the amount of time it takes for the sperm sample to come to liquid. All right. If it the, if it takes too much time, then it's an issue. All right. The idea is that a normal healthy sperm fluid takes like twenty to thirty minutes to liquefy. It takes like twenty to thirty minutes to liquefy. All right. Now with the kind of um, kinetic energy that was generated during the uh, copulation between the male and the female and the projectile that force that is supposed to use it's supposed to 
all these motions in, in combination are supposed to help as it sticks to the wall, give it some time because uh, there's a, what do you call it now? A stirring up has happened. After a while, it's supposed to liquefy so that it comes out of that frozen state and now begins to swing into the uterus. Now, if this uh, if this gelatinous um, mucus does not liquefy with time, the the kinetic energy that has been generated will be reduced, and that can also reduce the chances of the egg to fertilize the, 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 the sperm to fertilize the egg. All right. So that is why liquefying time is very important. So, okay, so this is the longitudinal section of the uterus, and um, this is where the penis enters. The penis enters here, and um, depending on how, how, how long or how deep it enters, and this is sperm that is released from the penis, and it's expected to ejaculate that speed into the cervix. This is the cervix region. This is the cervix. Okay? Now, as it gets here, if it is thick enough, it's expected to fall to stick to the walls of the cervix. Stick to the walls of the cervix. And by contraction, it's able to push this sperm down into this uterus. As it enters here, it's supposed to travel down the fallopian tube. Okay. Now, following ejaculation, the semen forms this gel, like I've said earlier on, and the essence of this gel is to protect the sperm from this acidic environment. Usually, the fluid I was talking about, the fluid I was talking about that uh, surrounds the cervix is called uh, cervical muco. Cervical muco. All right, it is usually acidic, all right, and the semen is expected to be thick enough and to be able to protect it from the high acid level of the cervical muco. All right, now I have also mentioned that it takes about once it hits this wall, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes for it to liquefy, all right. So that the sperm can be able to be free enough to now swim, right? So that they can swim to go and hit the egg. Now the protected sperm with the greatest motility, motility has to do with movement, speed of movement, right? That's the one that the, the, the protected sperm with the greatest motility travels down to the layers through the layers of the cervical mucus that guard the entrance of the uterus. Now, another thing I need to take note of is this. During ovulation, this barrier becomes thinner. This barrier becomes thinner and it changes its acidity level. The acidity level changes, meaning that it's expected to be more friendly. It becomes a little more alkaline. Normally, the cervical muco by default is highly acidic, trying to protect this region from pathogens. But once an ovulation takes place, it is expected that the acidity level will reduce a bit so that the environment will be friendly for the semen to travel safely. Alright? Then, um, the cervical mucus acts also as a reservoir for the extended sperm survival. Now that this, uh, um, the gelatin, has the gel has liquefied. This cervical muco is expected to be alkaline as in friendly enough to be able to keep some of this sperm within this region to give another chance for it to keep swimming to attempt. Let's say the first spermatozoa hit the egg did not succeed. There is still more chance for all these other ones to go and keep trying for the next five days. For the next five days, all right. So this is um, some of the basic things that we need to know about um, the liquefying time, why it should be thick for a while, and why it ought to 
liquefy so that um, fertilizer, fertilization can be achieved. Delayed liquefaction may also indicate a problem with the prostate, the seminal vesicles, or what we call the borboretal gland. All right, these are known as the male accessory glands. All right, so um, these are the basic things I just want you to take note of about the liquefying time. Now, let's go back to the result analysis so that we can interpret results. Now, let's look at the result analysis in a QRMA device. Okay, let me start with um, the low side, the low readings. Okay, so if it is morally abnormal low or severely abnormal low, it is not a concern. It means that from low to normal means that the liquefying time is taking a normal 20 to 30 minutes of liquefying time to liquefy, all right? But if it is on morally abnormal high, severely abnormal high, it means that it is taking a longer time to liquefy. It is taking a longer time to liquefy. It's supposed to be here, all right? But if it is here, it means that it's taking a shorter time to uh, liquefy, which is the idea. We want it to, that's why it's not a concern. We want it to liquefy so that the sperm can be free to move out of the semen and swim into um, the fallopian tube. But if it is a moderately abnormal high or severely abnormal high, then it's an issue of concern because it may be that it is either it is not uh, liquefying at all or it's taking a longer than normal time for it to liquefy. And if it takes a longer time for it to liquefy, it is reducing the chances for the for the fertilization process. All right. And um, when you have things like that, um, it may be on account of infection. Infection may be responsible for a moderately abnormal high result, severely abnormal high result. Another thing that could be responsible for that is also dehydration. Dehydration could be responsible for a moderately abnormal high or severely abnormal high result. Okay, now, um, non-liquefaction simply means that the semen has limited the movement of the sperm. It's like it has frozen its movement, not allowing it to move out to go and hit the egg in the fallopian tube. Okay, so that means that it cannot get the chance to fuse with the egg within the best possible time. Within the best possible time. All right. Now let's look at um, recommendation. Recommendation. We will encourage you to always take whole foods, organic foods. Take supplement like zinc, magnesium, selenium, lycopene, B complex, especially um, vitamin B6. Also take raw fruits and vegetables to correct hormonal imbalances and normalize semen liquefaction time. Always stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water is what I mean. Reduce stress, reduce or eliminate alcohol intake and then see the, your doctor for any possible infection. Alright, if you find infection in your system, treat it as fast as possible so that it doesn't reduce the chances of fertilization. So that's what we'll have under the liquefying time.